Hi folk, in the previous lecture a very basic architectural view of Zinc 7000 architecture was explained. In this lecture I will give rather a detailed version of Zinc 7000. At the same time I will also explain my future plan. Okay, let's go on. Zinc 7000 architecture basically has two components. One is PS, other one is PL. In any hybrid system. The software part is implemented in the PS and the hardware part is implemented in PL. PS and PL are being communicated via different interfaces. I will explain all these interfaces after a while. So PS, so Zinc 7000 in, okay, in Zinc 7000, the PS part has um, further subcomponent it has APU application processor unit, it has central interconnects, memory interfaces, IO peripherals and multiplexed IOs. If we see here in APU, APU has further subcomponent, CPU, it has two CPUs, it depends some you know some APUs are dual core, if they are dual core they will have two CPUs, some has only single processor they are called single core processors so CPU is uh, basically the main component that regulate and control all the function of PS so we also have memory management unit it just translate virtual addresses into physical addresses and physical addresses into virtual addresses there are two L1 caches, one is for data, other one is for instruction. Other block is snoop control unit. Snoop control unit is, is used to maintain the coherency between different caches. So what the coherency mean? For example, something, uh, some process, some process is done here and the data is changed here. So SCU will, tr will update the changes these changes into these cache as well so it just ensure that both of the RAM both of the caches has the updated data we also have a timer and watchdog timer watchdog timer is basically used to reset the system if there is some problem in the system timer can be used as a counter and it, uh, it can also be used as a timer. We will use all these components and we will implement these parts after some videos. In the same way we have L2 cache. L2 cache uh, SCU also regulate address translation between L1 and L2. Then L2 controller send these data and addresses into memory interfaces. So memory interfaces uh, is connected with external RAM DDR RAM which is rather a larger RAM for example in Z board we talk about Z board the size of DDR RAM is 512 megabyte here we also have another RAM that is OCM on, on chip RAM the size of OCM is 256 kilobyte so this OCM memory is uh, basically used for low latency application. Uh, if we see here, the size of the memory is larger, so to read and write from or to that memory will take much longer time. So if your application is highly critical about latency, you can switch to that RAM as well. Yeah, we have DMA as well, direct memory access. We have different eight channels here. The main function of DMA, for example, if we do not have a DMA and if processors want to read and write a huge amount of data to and from memory, during that process, a CPU or processor will keep busy itself and that will degrade the performance of CPU. Instead of that, the CPU will instruct to DMA by using small instruction and after giving after giving the instruction DMA will 
write or read a huge amount of data to memory. During this process, I mean during writing and reading process, CPU can do other functions. So in that way, TMA increase, enhance the performance of CPU. Okay, so we also have other timers, system watchdog timer, uh, triple, time uh, triple time counter, and we have system level control register that uh, you know control the behavior of system uh, i will you know give a detailed explanation of this component well when i will be implementing i will implement all the parts in my following videos okay this is what apu then we have central interconnect central interconnect mainly uh, is a kind of bridge between memory interfaces and IO peripherals and you know PS and PL interfaces yeah <clears throat> then other component is IO peripheral uh, Zinc 7000 had, has uh, a large number of peripherals uh, some of these are USB, Ethernet, SD, GPIO, General Peripheral IOs, UART, CAN, I2C, SPI Again, I will implement all these peripherals one by one in the following videos. These IO peripherals are, can be connected to the external world by using 50, uh, 54 pins multiplexed IOs. So these 50, 54 pins MIO can be dynamically allocated during runtime. So any kind of IO peripheral can be connected to the to the external world via MIO. So this is what PS has. The last component is uh, is GIC General Interrupt Controller. So this General Interrupt Controller take interrupts from PL and from IO peripherals and give give these interrupts to the p to the ps i mean to the cpu and cpu will you know do do processing according to the interrupt yeah next part is uh, pl in programmable logic pl is simply an fpga so any kind of hardware part customized accelerator logic can be implemented here in many application we need a hybrid system what what I mean to say is uh, if we of course if you have a customized hardware here so you want to make a communication of that uh, customized hardware with a PS so there are different interfaces that can be exploited here to make a communication between customized accelerator and PS so it depends uh, on the application there are different interfaces for example extended multiplexed IO so but via this interfaces you can you know take any IO peripherals to PL part so by, by using this interface you can make communication between PS and PL via uh, for different IO peripherals. For example, uh, there is an application in which you need to uh, communicate with the PL part by using, you know, UART communication channel. You can easily do this by using EMIO. In the same way, USB, Ethernet, CAN, I2C, SPI, anything. The next is a general port. Uh, so, general port. There are four different general ports in uh, Zing 7000. And they are basically for low speed application. They are basically used to configure your customized accelerator. For example, you can configure your uh, IP by using this interface. The other one is high performance port, as an, as name indicates. Uh, it is used for high data rate application. Again. Uh, the last one is ACP this is also 
used for high performance application it is even faster than HP so if we see these interfaces uh, this interface this interface goes here it uh, can communicate with the DDRM externally it can send it can read and write data from uh, external RAM which is of course larger RAM but it can also make communication with OCM so uh, again it can this port can be used for low latency applications as well similarly this IO peripherals via central interconnects can read and write can read and write data to and from two different memories again depending on the application you can select any any uh, one of uh, these RAMs the last one is ACP it is also has the capability to communicate to read and write data from both of the RAM it is the fastest interface uh, between PS and PL the last is configurable IOs uh, you can configure IOs uh, and make possible PL to communicate with the external world so this is what uh, housing 7000 architecture works of course this is uh, again not a very detailed version but I think this uh, that much of detail is enough for for my following videos of course uh, if you have any question regarding missing component I have the knowledge you can write in the comment box in the comment box I will try to give answers yeah, this is my future plan in the future uh, I'm planning to divide my uh, implementation into four parts in the first part I will implement all the IO peripherals of course first part will not be completed in one day it will take many days uh, yeah because there are many interfaces there are many peripherals all of the peripherals will be explained and implemented uh, and all of your doubts will be removed will be vanished will be you know cleared uh, in the following videos uh, yeah next part uh, in the next part I will implement all the interfaces with examples uh, because these interfaces has different uh, you know uh, interface different AXI communication channel there are three different AXI's uh, interfaces AXI light AXI stream AXI you know full so all of these AXI will be implemented and will be communicated and uh, uh, yeah in this part we will implement this one in the last uh, part uh, I will explain many uh, methods for latency measurements yeah for example you have implemented a system and you want to measure the latency of that system I will explain different methods to measure the latency uh, meanwhile I will also give many examples uh, I will do some implementation DDRM, OCM, HP, GP and ACP I will measure the performance and their latency I will give I will show you a latency values yeah so it is really important to note that I will use Zboard and Vivado will be used in the following lectures in the next lecture, I will explain a detailed version of IO peripherals and I will implement GPIO as well in Vivado and I will show the results as well. Uh, yeah, it is again really worth to note uh, the GPIO will be implemented but it will be implemented via multiplex dial. In the video after the next video, I will again implement this GPIO, GPIO via EMIO. So yeah, step by step, I will you know implement all the components and I will you know clear all your concepts and doubts. Yeah, thank you very much, and please don't forget to subscribe and share my channel because sharing is caring. Thank you very much. Take care.